Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's Mizuki Arts. Today we are going to be talking about 20 things artists should or can do uh, in 2023 to improve their art. Um, a lot of these I actually did in 2022, and some of them I'm going to be doing this year. Obviously I want to continue as many of these habits as I can, um, but some of them are in here obviously because I've tested them and some are in here just because I want to try them out. So with no further ado, let's get right into it. The first tip I want to give you all is to start projects you might not finish or just pursue a passion project. Um, this one is actually more important than you might think because a lot of people spend a lot of time like preparing things um, because they want it to be perfect and obviously they want to have enough tools to be able to finish what they start, which, you know, is a good habit. but. Also, that can lead to never giving yourself the permission to start new things or try new mediums. And we interrupt this program to bring you a special shout out to my Kofi supporter. Thank you so much, Ashley, for supporting me on Kofi. And let's get right back into the video. <laughs> Just as an example, uh, as I was saying, um, if you spend several years preparing yourself to work on a comic, but you don't give yourself the time to actually work on it and actually see what it would be like to work on it, um, you may never actually get around to it at all. Um, which obviously is, is fine if you're okay with that, but sometimes it's better to just give yourself kind of a taste of what the project would be like. You don't have to go diving in right away, but say you write up three chapters of it um, and you make those three chapters and you know, if when you're ready to dive in fully, um, you want to remake those, it's fine, but at least you have some idea um, about what working on that project would be like uh, because Boredom is kind of normal um, in long-term projects, like it's kind of normal to get bored of uh, stuff you're working on, you know, um, and it's important to get yourself prepared to deal with that. My next tip, tip number two, is to quote-unquote attend art school, and I don't mean actually like go to like a college campus or whatever, um, although you can do that, I just mean give yourself time to like study the basics, you know, um, even if you consider yourself like an intermediate or an advanced artist, um, I'm like kind of low-grade intermediate myself, um, it's important to give yourself kind of reviews, it can be easy to like get up in uh caught up in like projects but um it's kind of really important to still keep studying um because as an artist you're kind of always a student in some way or another tip number three is kind of like really quick um it's to reevaluate your projects um because it's a new year i think everyone's thinking about like changes and stuff and i think now is a better time than ever to like really look at what you're working on um whether it is you run a youtube channel you stream you have a shop etc etc and look at ways you can streamline your work um and change things to work better for you. Uh, for example, um, in 2020, I didn't like TikTok. I don't know why I didn't like it so much. I think it was just politics. I had a whole video that I actually put up on this channel back when about it. Um, and I just, I stopped going on there because I hated it so much. Um, and that wasn't an example of a, I guess what I mean by this, which is, uh, work on projects that work for you. Tip number four is to try three new mediums. Um, you can choose any three. You should choose any three. Honestly, if you try one new medium, that's something at least. But um, I think it's always good to break out of your shell a little bit and try something new. Um, I wouldn't recommend necessarily like going out and buying like the most expensive of any medium you want to try, um, like the most expensive version. Um, just find find a way to kind of break out of your usual routine with making art um even if you just do this as a hobby it's kind of like uh, a really great way to <laughs> just give yourself kind of a refresher tip number five uh is something that i find myself constantly recommending and it's to start a second sketchbook um it's really easy to like kind of make yourself 
crack under the pressure if you only have like one sketchbook going but i think if you have one that's like for doodling and just being really casual and then one that's for finished pieces it can really make the whole creative process feel like a little more streamlined um and a little bit more like when you sit down to draw you're going to feel uh differently for however you're going to approach either sketchbook you know um like when i come to my my doodle sketchbook um it's it's a cheap paper so i can draw kind of whatever i want and it can turn out really really bad and i won't care um and i can kind of work out ideas there if i'm having a hard time in my regular sketchbook for some reason um and it's something that i kept going throughout 2022 and i'm going to continue it into 2023 because i just enjoyed having two two sketchbooks going one for final projects and one for ideas tip number six is to try to get your art into a gallery or like a craft fair or a convention um obviously this is just kind of something that i am planning to do for fun um but you know it's really kind of cool to get to experiment with that stuff and a lot of people make it their full-time jobs uh, to like table at conventions or craft fairs or whatever and they make a lot of money that way so I think it's something that every artist should try just because I think it's pretty cool. You can look online on places like Facebook um, for like local events like this like if you go on your town's Facebook page or um, like on the pages of like organizations that you know do this kind of stuff locally um you can find a lot of information that way you can you and you can even sign up for like emails or whatever so that you're notified when that stuff is planned um but anyway here's tip number seven tip number seven is to try plein air painting um which is like drawing outside and from life um it's kind of something the old masters so to speak did um and i think it of course helps to draw from life um and i think getting out in nature is something that's really healthy because it gets you out of your usual workspace and i think a lot of people that follow me um kind of draw a lot of similar things to me and that they're like really into character design and like painting and stuff so um i i think if you're like me, um, you don't spend a lot of time studying uh, the natural world, so I think that could be really beneficial for, for well, for me, um, and, and probably for others too. Tip number eight is to keep an art diary for a week. That's something I'm going to do at some point uh, this year. Um, and what I mean by that is make a point of it um, for like at least a week to sit down every day, maybe around the same time and draw something that had to do with your day. Uh, maybe take reference photos of certain parts of your day, like maybe, uh, like, I don't know, what you had for lunch, uh, a mirror selfie, uh, what have you, you know, um, just different parts of your day and try to draw them um, in your sketchbook. This is really helpful if you struggle to be consistent about working in your sketchbook, um, and I think it's always, of course, a good idea to try drawing from life at some point, um, and of course, it's just fun. Tip slash goal number nine is to write and illustrate a story. Um, obviously, some of these really aren't tips. They're more like goals or like prompts for things you can do this year. Um, and this one was something that I sort of did last year, but I'm not quite done with it yet. Um, writing and illustrating a story is really fun on it and it gives you the chance to um kind of experience what it's like to work on a project um and obviously you get to bring to life like your characters and a world um and i recommend trying to keep it short uh, or obviously if you are really into it like run with it you know uh why not um but this kind of builds off of i think the first tip um, I don't remember how I numbered them, but <laughs> whichever one it was where I talked about just starting projects, like just getting started, um, this one kind of runs with that one. Tip 10 is another more project oriented one and it's to design a clothing item. Um, obviously a lot of artists, pretty much all artists are, you know, creative minds and thinkers and stuff um but how would you design something that was meant to be worn in like the real world you know like how how would what you are able to design um for like a character 
work on a real person like how would you structure it how would you build it maybe even design like the pattern like watch some videos about pattern making or clothing design and watch people break down clothing this is actually really great for like learning how clothing is built um and how fabric lays and stuff and something i'm going to do this year probably more than once just because it seems like it would be really fun this one might sound kind of silly on its own but um tip number 11 is to try realism um i actually recommend this mostly if you only draw cartoony and if you only draw realism try cartooning um you know just kind of to get that balance between like creative vision and uh like um, reality I guess um, because it's really the combination of imagination and reality that um, makes art unique um, because it's taking what's already there and um, adding something to it you know um, and I think um, explaining this uh, I think it kind of helps a little bit um, so I'm not just saying you can't just draw cartoons uh, because I pretty much draw like you know stylized stuff all day so rest rest assured i'm not saying just you know give up cartooning or whatever if you thought the last tip was kind of out of pocket or like basic uh this one will probably seem even more basic and that is to use trash in your art um now no hang on here hang on hang on okay i i probably sound like whoever taped a banana to a wall and thought that was art but um i i'm saying if you find like a piece of food packaging or whatever um that you really like the design of keep it like tape it in your sketchbook um use it somehow to like layer over your sketch or whatever use different textures and colors and try to think about why whatever it is you used in your art why you like it you know like what's special about it what made you drawn to keeping it um and that's kind of the point of uh this this 12th tip you know um anyways here's tip 13. tip 13 is to draw things you have never drawn before um and this one might take a while to complete just because maybe it might take you a moment to think of something that you've never drawn before um maybe draw your desk or uh draw a family member you've never drawn before or draw like your pet if you don't draw your pet like at all <laughs> you know just draw something you've never taken the time to study before tip number 14 is to draw things you really really hate drawing like really take the time to study them um and uh try to think of it in a way that relates to something you like to draw you know um for me i really hate drawing feet i hate it i can't draw shoes i can't draw bare feet i can't even draw like feet and socks and those are basically just lumps and fabric but um so I, I have to take time and study it um, under the kind of, I guess, mental guidelines of understanding that in order to draw characters that look good, you have to know how to, like, draw bodies that look good, you know, like, bodies that make sense. Um, and if the feet don't make sense, the viewer's eye is just going to be drawn to that. Tip number 15 is more of like a workflow and productivity thing, and it's to reorganize your desk. Like, really, really clean it up, you know? Like, take everything off. Make an even bigger mess before you clean, you know? Like, take everything off um, and go through things, get rid of what you don't want to keep, wipe down your desk, and then rearrange things so that they work for you. Like, try to think of things that have been, like, in your way recently, um, and don't just put them back where you found them, you know? Um, think of a better place for them if they you know you still need it but you don't want to necessarily have it in your way all the time you know um recently i've had to do this and i'll probably have to do it again because i didn't do a great job um but i think uh working on your workspace can do wonders for your art tip number 16 is to try painting over magazine images 
Um, this one's kind of weird, but um, it's a study technique I wanted to try, uh, specifically like a color and shape study technique. Um, I'm not sure if other people have done it before, um, but I just thought recently like how cool it would have been to take like old magazine images um, and like paint over them, really study like the colors, the values, um, the lighting, uh, the shapes and stuff. Um, and I particularly recommend doing this in kind of a blotchy style so you can really like see the shapes and stuff. Um, so I'm probably going to make a video about that so at some point this year. I think it'd be really fun. Tip number 17 is to draw art that's just for you. Um, like art that's, you know, related to a passion project, art that's just doodling and expressing your thoughts on paper, you know, just make art that no one else is going to see. Um, and this is really, really good if you're like really into storytelling and stuff, it can actually really help you kind of further yourself along in the kind of writing and character building process. Um, so I really recommend this and it's a really great way to kind of empty your head too, um, if you're like me and, you know, you just, you just spin yourself in circles sometimes. Tip number 18 is to break away from your usual art form. This is different than uh, trying new mediums. This is like, um, if you're a sculptor, uh, try painting. If you're, you know, um, a graphite sketch type artist, then maybe try like sewing or something. You know, just really uh, get out of your usual kind of creative headspace and uh, try something new because it's easy to get bored I think sometimes. Tip number 19 is to get out of your usual workspace, um, and I don't just mean like plain air painting like I mentioned earlier, uh, I mean like go to a cafe or a library or anywhere that you don't usually work. And last but not least, tip number 20, the most important tip of the video arguably is to take your sketchbook with you to school or work. Um, I've been doing this for a couple years now and I have to say it has made a huge difference for me um, in terms of like uh, my improvement rate um, and I've been a lot faster at drawing because I've taken my sketchbook with me pretty much anywhere. As soon as I have an idea, I can start working. So it's made a really big difference to me and I really recommend you give it a try. Obviously not everyone has time to, you know, do like full-on paintings between classes or during classes or whatever, um, but if you can just sketch during like your lunch break or something, that will make a difference later when you sit down at your desk and you want to start working, um, because I don't know about you guys, but um, when I have a limited amount of free time, um, I kind of panic. Uh, because I don't feel like I can get uh, things done unless they're already kind of started and laid out for me. Um, so knowing that I have the sketch done is kind of a huge motivator um, when I sit down to work like I've already made some progress that day so I don't have to worry uh, about being like especially productive during my time at home. And obviously the more time you work on a piece, uh, the more you're able to kind of think about it while you're not working on it. Um, and you can think of some ideas to add to the piece, maybe simplify it if it's too complicated. You know, just kind of uh, think your way through the piece um, throughout a day or multiple days simply because you have multiple different work sessions. This also helps take the pressure off simply because uh, my time at home doesn't have to be uh, work time if I've already put some like work into a sketch or something or maybe done the line art during a lunch break or something. Um, it just it can really make a big difference to kind of take the pressure off by not limiting yourself to one drawing session during the day, um, which is pretty cool I think. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you for 600 subscribers, by the way. I'm not sure if I said anything about that last time, but thank you guys so much for being here. Both my Instagram and YouTube have been doing really well lately, and I'm just really grateful. So yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye!